it may seem strange to be talking about 2D shapes in a 3D program, but in actual fact, these can provide us with the backbone of many of the objects that you would create in 3D. So let's just have a look at these in our actual 3D view here. Let's look at them in perspective. Let's just pull out a little way here and we'll highlight them as well. Now, look at them in wireframe mode as well. So what we've got here, as you can see, I can look around them. So we're definitely in a 3D space, but these are definitely 2D as well. Apart from maybe this one here, which is the helix, but we'll talk about that one in a moment. Really, what we've got here is a collection of the shapes that can be created from our Create Shapes tab. And they're all listed under here, under the Splines section. So we've got some fairly straightforward things that you'd expect to see. There's a line here, if I just go to the Modify tab as well, and that comes up as being an editable line as well. I've got a rectangle, and each one of these uh, sort of set shapes is very much parametric, so I can change the length of this, and I can change the width of it as well, and I can even add corner radius in. Let's make that nice and obvious, there you go. So that looks all well and good. I've got an ellipsoid here, which obviously has a length and a width as opposed to what the circle has over here which is simply a radius. The arc is the next one that I've got here and again we can pick a radius for that we can say to and from so you can just have something with a gap you can even sort of open up arcs as well. I've got an end gone here which generally refers to any sided shape so my Engon can have a radius and it can have a number of sides as well, anywhere from three right the way through to, that's 24, but you can see here eight. And if I reduce my way down, I can also add a corner radius onto those. So we can really sort of start to, as you can see here, we can start to soften that up quite a lot. And in actual fact, um, you might find that if you follow through these tutorials that we start using this in another tutorial. Uh, later on to help build us a, th a 3D shape. I've got a star, and a star again is sort of a, a one up from the end gone. Uh, and really that allows us to have a radius for the outer points, a radius for the inner shape, the number of points. Uh, we've got some distortion here as well. You can see I'm putting into that. And also a fillet radius, so we can radius off the end points make that look a little bit more interesting. Let's just try and bring that back. I think I've gone a little bit too far with that. There we go. And also a radius for the outer point. So you can start to sort of overlap and you get some sort of spirograph kind of effect. Um, very interesting. A little bit odd, but there you go. The next one I wanted to look at was this one, which is the helix. Now this is the only truly 3D, um, 2D shape as it were. And this has a height that we can see here. And we can have as many turns as we want on that. And we can give ourselves uh, an inner and an outer radius. So that can be the basis for a spring or a coil or something. Certainly if you sort of animate the height, you can see there that looks very, very springy. And I can have this bias towards the top or the bottom. So you've got that kind of a slinky effect. And we can have that clockwise or counterclockwise. So sort of nothing out of the ordinary here so far. Our text that we've got there can be changed. So I can change that to 3DS. No, oh, would help if I got the right key on the keyboard. 3DS Max. Oh, there you go. Now look at that. Lots of different things. I'll just stay with 3DS for the moment. Then, shall I? I think there's something wrong with my keyboard. It won't uh, won't give me a capital S, uh, M if I press the Shift key. So we can change that. I can also change the type of font that we've got here. Very simple, very easy. Creating these is just as easy. If I wanted to create something like a circle, I'll just left click where I want the uh, center point to be, and I'll drag out. Same with something like a donut. I'll left click, I'll drag out the outer amount, and then I'll push in the actual donut shape, or I'll pull it out. It really just doesn't matter too much. Um, something like the star shape, again. Now notice we are going with 
the previous settings that we had here for each one of these so that's something to be aware of if I click text you see that's the last bit of text that I typed in over here it's not the default so do try and remember that that when you're working with these uh, shapes it's very very important to make sure that you know you, you get your settings correct because if you're going to keep using it again and again within the same file if I was to close the file open it up again that would be different it would default back to its its default sort of settings but just remember that within the same scene you're going to get the last thing that you typed or the last set of settings the only one I would say that you really want to sort of pay a, a lot of attention to here is the line because we've got an initial type and a drag type and if I set both of those to corner what I'm, I'm press and hold the shift key if I press and hold the shift key what I get is a snap to this orthographic direction here so that's worth knowing about just pressing and holding the shift key but if I don't do that what I'm getting is a very sort of linear shape here and if I click to close there I get asked if I want to close that spline so that now becomes a shape if I did smooth I'd actually be creating arcs and sort of these slightly more organic shapes there we go and if I set to bezier what I get is I click my first one I left click and I hold my second one and I've got a certain amount of control as to how I make this line look it can be a little bit odd but there you go my personal feeling is to go for corner and corner and just make sort of a really simple shape to begin with and work from there one thing that you might find interesting as well is with any spline no matter what you do with it if you go to the rendering section you can click on enable in viewport render and enable in viewport and what I'll get is something like this if I press F3 you can see we've actually got a solid shape there and that's a solid shape of a rail or I could make that rectangular and I can increase the length and I can increase the width and what I've now created is in fact what looks very much like a set of walls except for one of the, uh, the useful things I've got is I can actually rotate this round so I can do some very strange things um, with the whole of this quite weird and funky but I tend to find that things like this are best set in radial and they're very very useful for making banister rails and also pipework or guttering on a house so that's our introduction to using 3d shapes at the beginning of this chapter Let's get on with the rest of the chapter and start using these in earnest.